Okay everyone, welcome back to Med Ed Animation. The purpose of this video is just to be very basic about Synfig as an animation program, uh, just focusing on how do I trace a picture. So this is like super, super simple, but just being very explicit about every step. If I have a drawing that I did maybe on a sketchbook and took a picture with my phone or whatever it is, or if I made it in another program, how I just drop that into Synfig and then trace over it in shapes in an organized way that will then be useful when I go to animate it later. So I'm in the program Synfig here and uh, the first step is importing the image I want to import. And before we even talk about in Synfig, it's kind of important how you set this up. So in this case I have this little clip from a storyboard. Um, it's this otter looking at a door basically and I want to trace and animate this. So it's a, it's a .png file, which Synfig tends to like, and I have it in a very specific folder. So I know that, okay, it's in a certain folder on my computer, and it's going to stay there. Um, and that's important because once you put something in Synfig, if you then move it from that location, Synfig could get confused, and at least in the older version, sometimes you get stuck and you can't even open it again. Um, the newer ones, I think they made it a little better, I think, where you can then like go research for it, um, but it's just not worth the hassle. So make sure, your image that you're tracing is in the folder it's going to stay in and that any of the parent folders even that it's in are not going to be renamed or moved after that. Uh, so just word to the wise. Okay, so there are two ways to then get this picture file into Synfig here. So I have a new just, you know, a new default Synfig document here. Um, option one is I click and drag and you see the plus sign comes up. Or option two is I go to File Import, which is Control-I. So they're both the same, but I'm just gonna click and drag. Boop. Okay, that's actually tiny, wow. Um, so, and then, so now I have this picture dropped in, and you see that on the right here, um, in your layers box, which might be a little different laid out than mine, um, there's now this, it's the same name I had on the picture on the PNG file. Let me see if I can make that more, yeah, c.png. So that's now there. All right, now, uh, you know, with our typical handles here, I'm going to just make it bigger. So I'm gonna use this orange corner here to scale the picture. And because our origin is right in the middle of that picture automatically, when I scale it, it stays nice and center. And I just get it to a comfortable spot around, you know, approximately the size of the image. I'm gonna hit Control S to save here. And let's call this, and I'll do this on the desktop for now, but theoretically I'd recommend you do this in a very, you know, in a folder where it's going to stay. So we'll call this Otter Tracing Demo. Uh, and the extension is added, so I hit save. Okay. So, um, so now I have this. So now we can start tracing. And a lot of this is just thinking logically and planning out what chunks or pieces will be useful to me if I want to animate part of it later. So let's start simple. In the background, you have this door. It's actually uh, this trendy sort of sliding door, I guess. So I want to make the pieces of this door, uh, and I'm zooming in, by the way, I'm using Control plus and Control minus, or rather Control equals and Control minus. You could also use plus and minus here. So I'm zooming in here, and I'm going to hit uh, Option B, or click the Spline tool, which is that kind of that Bezier, Bezier curve or spline vector sort of drawing tool. And when I trace, I have to look very carefully at the options for that tool because the two you want to pay attention to are these two. You can be making a region, a line, or both. Don't worry about these for now. So let's say for argument purposes, argument's sake, argument's sake, that I want a, a line and a solid here, a region. So I have it set like that. I'm on my spline tool. And let's say I want to make the door. So then I just go for it. I'm just using a mouse here. I'm not using a tablet or anything. So um, I'm actually just using my trackpad at the moment, but a wireless mouse you know, might be a little easier. And I'm just clicking and dragging. Uh, you can either just click sharp corners or you can click and drag to create those sort of curvy tangent uh, type angles. And, and this becomes more intuitive with time, like how hard you want to click and drag. When I get back to the end of the loop here, back to my green dot, I right click or two finger click in this case and go down to loop spline. And then it's kind of still in flux. You can still kind of modify it. And then I just, I just hit option A, which is the same as going to the select button. Boom. And these are just the default colors that were set here. So it actually has a, this blue fill and red outline. Um, 
I'm often too lazy to um, set this every time before I draw. I just kind of draw everything and then shape fix the colors after. Um, but that said, I want to know, I'm going to need to see what's under that in a minute, but we'll cross that bridge. All right, so I'm just going to zoom in in the same way. Um, you know, actually, I'll just make these outline, the default outline color black for now, just to be less annoying. And maybe I'll make this gray. So I just double click these boxes to change the outline and the fill color respectively. And again, you can always change it later. You can always edit every shape later. <clears throat> um, and by the way, right now we have our door is this line in this region here. Okay, so now I'm going to make this kind of hangery thing. Ooh, bye -bye. Okay. I'm going to make this hanger thing, and it's sort of just like a bar. So it's like a skinny rectangle, doing my thing. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Looping, hitting control, uh, option A. And now I have that rectangle, zooming in even more. I'm hitting option B to go back to my spline tool. So I'm constantly going option A, option B to toggle between um, like the pointer and the sp uh, spline tool. So option A, now back to option B. Boop. All right, and I'm just kind of taking it easy here. All right, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit see how I'm looking. So I'm looking pretty schnazzy. Maybe right now I'll click on this door and say, okay, you're made of wood. You should be like a brown color. So let's just make you brown on this color wheel. And then if I hide that region for a second, I can say, oh yeah, there were these squares here. So when I put it back, um, maybe I'll zoom in again and just freehand draw some rectangles. The other option, if I wanted to really trace the underlying drawing here, I could lower the opacity. Um, or hide the door layer, um, and that way I'd see it exact. But in this case, it has this kind of sloppy, cartoony look that is totally cool. All right, so I'll just kind of do those for now. And so obviously I can go in later and change these colors, make this a light brown or, you know, whatever I want to do, or dark brown, I guess. So let's say, let's say this is how I like the door. You can spend more time with it. But let's say later, I know it because of these arrows, I'm going to want to animate this whole door, which includes the door rectangle, these squares, and these hook things, all moving in, in unison. I know that I'm going to want all of those shapes to be all grouped together. So what I do is I go to my layers here, and I hold down the shift key, and I just start hitting up, just like if I was selecting text or anything else. And I just keep watching the screen. See, now here I have a problem because I hit, when I go up more, I hit this bar that I don't want included. So let's just take what we have so far of this door and hit group, group layer. So now I have this folder, and I'll call this whole door. Um, and then if I have other pieces, like these hooks I want attached to that, I can select those also. And just like with Microsoft Word or whatever, I just hit Command X, like cutting and pasting. I cut in there, I paste it into the folder, and voila. So now those things are all there. But you notice when I did that, now this is um, behind the bar, so I know that, all right, I'm gonna take this whole door layer and bump it up in front of the bar, right? So now what that means is that later, you know, I have this group layer, and if I wanted to later, I can move it all around, right? I can move it wherever, oops, that's not the button. I can move it, he said, <laughs> back and forth along here, right? Because now it's one big group. I can skew it, I can do all kinds of weird stuff. Whoop, yeah, okay. So that's the general idea. Um, so, you know, if I were to proceed, other things I would do is I'd make a background layer. Um, so I would, here you could even use the rectangle tool, but I would recommend when you use the, the rectangle tool to um, still have region selected and not rectangle, because it just gives you some more functionality and options later uh, in a pinch. Oops, I clicked the button. So maybe I do like, my rectangle tool and do like a like one rectangle for the uh, floor, another one for the overall background, but I put the background one behind the floor, and then I quickly change the color because right now, of course, I can't see what I'm doing here. Um, so maybe this will be like a dark brown, like a wood floor, and then this can be like off-white. Okay. Um, one other fancy trick I'll tell you, because it'll help with the tracing process, is let's say you still wanted to see your drawing. 
and assuming it's on a white background, change the blend mode um, because there are a lot of blend modes where you can get rid of all this white and just see your sketch on top of your work that you're doing. So that would be like I go to blend mode here and I go from composite and let's say I switch it to like multiply, I should do it. Yeah, there you go. So multiply is sort of a thing that darkens, superimposes just the darkening parts and takes out the white. So now I see primarily my vector work so far, but when I toggle this on and off, I still see my line work underneath. So if I want to go trace this otter, you know, I can go ahead and do that now. Oops. So, um, where that? So yeah, so that's the basics of, of tracing. Um, I guess to take it, you know, the next step would be with this otter, it's basically a creative choice and it has to do with knowing whether or not you're gonna animate or not. For example, if I plan to have all the different body parts of the otter moving, I would need to make a separate arm layer, a separate head, and have them all kind of connect together. But then again, maybe the otter's just sitting here and doesn't move, and the only thing that moves is like the tail wag. So then I can make, you know, this whole shape, I'll just do a quick, you know, the otter from head to toe, and just put some like lines in later. Maybe I'll do the leg as a separate thing just for convenience. But I see how I go behind the tail. I don't try to trace around it because you want to have everything in three dimensional space. But then, you know, loop it, option A. And now all I would do at the end is going to make my separate tail layer. And also remember, even if the drawing goes off the screen, still finish the anatomy off the screen because when you animate, those pieces may come into view, right? This whole tail might later, oops, this whole tail might later like wag into view or something. I don't know, I'm doing it terribly. Um, so you wanna go beyond the bounds of what's visible. Same if I'm making this leg here, I'm not just gonna stop Right, I'm not going to do this and like trace around it, right? Because then that doesn't give you any wiggle room. So instead, what I would do is picture the rest of the leg that's hidden. And then you could just put that layer behind it to save you later. So. So that's like, okay, like right, like see how right now this line is weird because it's in front. I would just take, you know, I could take the region and the line from this, make it a group, call it leg, and then I move that leg behind the body and tail. So I'd call this one uh, body, and I take this region and line and call it tail, and then I'd select tail, body, and leg put them in a group and call that whole otter, right? And then I'd go back and if I wanted to add the ears, I would go back into my, maybe my body folder here, click this layer, oops. And, and you can, by the way, keep that initial drawing on top of all this to make it visible. So I go to whole otter, body, select something in the body. So I know that the next layer I draw will automatically go right on top of that. And see how, again, I'm going inside the bounds here. I'll just do two of those. You know, and I would be more careful on that thing. Uh, I think that worked. Make them darker so we can see them. Yeah, so those ears. Those ears now exist. Okay. So I hope that's a general, a good general introduction to how I think about layers when I'm tracing over an image. So to review, the key teaching points here were how to import the sketch and making sure it's in a folder where it's safe and going to stay. Um, another thing was taking that, that drawing layer and making it into another blend mode, like multiply, and keeping it on top of the other layers to keep it visible. Then it was just the logical chunking of groups of layers based on what you're going to want to move as a cohesive unit versus what things are gonna stay separate and individual and create that hierarchy of folders that are really easy to access later. So I hope this was a helpful, uh, simple, straightforward intro to how I go from a pencil drawing to a vectorized form that I can then animate. 
Um, and once you guys have mastered this, I have plenty of other tutorials on my uh, YouTube channel, Medit Animation, um, that can help you get the character actually moving and take this to the next level. So, enjoy!